This podcast was recorded on Ramanjiri land. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to this week's Flurio Footy Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Costello. This week, we'll look at the first and second semi-finals from each grade last weekend. Uh, we have a very special guest, uh, Rod Mitchell, the A grade and club coach from my Ponga Selix Football Club. We will look at the first and second semi-finals in all grades from 10 years ago. We will re- review the Telstra Senior Colts and Flurio Milk Junior Colts presentation night and try to make some sense of it. Uh, then we will look at Flurio Footy Podcast 2022 Team of the Year, and we hope that you give us some feedback regarding our selections and your thoughts. Uh, we hope you enjoy the show. Here are the results for last weekend's GSFL first and second semi finals. Uh, for the A-grade, Reserves, Telstra Senior Colts and Flurio Milk Junior Colts. On Saturday, the 3rd of September, the men's A-grade second semi-final at Victor Harbour Oval, McLaren took on Wollonga and McLaren had a good win, 19-9-123, defeating Wollonga 5 goals, 6-36. Best players for McLaren, Ashley Goodison, Todd McKay, Jackson Daniels, Leon Groves, Jamie Smith and Luke Mitten. Goal kickers for McLaren, Luke Mitten 5, Jay Martin 3, M Merritt 2, Jay Daniels 2, Jay Grimley 2, L Groves 2, singles to T McKay, T Harms and B Charla. Wollonga best players, Harrison Mills, Sam Tregenza, Brett Meagle, Craig Nelson, Billy Cook, Cameron McDonald, goal kickers T Hoffman, D Irvine, J Stanfield, B Haskett, and S Rennie all kicked one. So McLaren through to the grand final and Wollonga to play off in the prelim. So in the men's reserve grade second semi final at Victor Harbour Oval. Uh, Wollonga took on my Ponga Selix and Wollonga were too strong there. 13 goal 785, defeating my Ponga Selix 3 goal 220. Best players for Wollonga, Scott Brown, Tom Messenger, Felix Beckers, Cam Turner, Miles Warmington and Sean Gale. Goal kickers, M Warmington 3, J Dawson 2, S Gale 2, J Steele 2. Singles to F Beckers, M Williams, D Young and S Brown. Best players for my Ponga Selix, Wade Hutchinson, Mark Polst, Ryan Mays, Tyler Daniel, Kyle Grundy and Kane Andrewatha. Goal kickers for my Ponga Selix, T Grundy 2 and K Grundy 1. So Wollonga into the grand final and my Ponga Selix to play off in the prelim. Here are the uh, second semi-final results for the Telstra Senior Colts played at Victor Harbour Oval. Uh, my Ponga Selix took on Strathalbyn and Strathalbyn had a good win there, 9 goal 4, 58, defeating my Ponga Selix, 4 goal 6, 30. Best players for Strathalbyn, Hugo Jenke, Max Ferguson, Ashton Hoffman, Hunter McMurtry, Jack Wheaton and William Sheriff. Goal kickers for Strathalbyn, J Gilbert 3, L Barbary 2, singles to J Roberts, M Ferguson, W Sheriff and O O'Driscoll. Best players for my Ponga Selix, Douglas Stock, Reef Spencer, Jaden Hines, Seath Deacon, Sean Havers and Jai Dooley. Goal kickers J Gerardo 2, singles to R Charlton and K Dooley. So Strath into the grand final and my Ponga Selix to play off in the prelim. And the final second semi-final, <laughs> the Flurio Milk Junior Colts at Victor Harbour Oval saw my Ponga Selix take on Strathalbyn again. Um, and my Ponga Selix 
uh, were too good. Eight goals, seven fifty-five to Strathalbyn, five goals, two thirty-two. Uh, best players for my Ponga Selics: Jake Holford, Nathan Siwak, Jack Brown, Cody Hines, Jack Noble, and Harper Matthewson. Goal kickers for my Ponga Selics: Jay Holford, three; Jay Noble, Noble, two. Singles to end Siwak, T Gray, and L Deacon. Best players for Strathalbyn: Phoenix Keatley, Jeffrey Ayers, Mason Stefanowicz Smith, Darcy Guga, and Marshall Field, and Max Weiss. Goal kickers: K Hobbs three and P Keatley two. So my Ponga Selks Junior Colts are into the grand final, and Strathalbyn will play in the prelim. Here are the results for the men's first semi-final knockout round on Sunday the 4th of September at Langon Creek Oval. Uh, the men's A-grade saw my Ponga Selix take on Langon Creek and in a tight tussle, my Ponga Selix uh, were the victors there, 9 goal 14 68 to Langon Creek, 8 goal 9 57. Um, best players for my Ponga Selix, Elliot Chalmers, Bradley Clark, Samuel Kennedy, Ryan Kelly, Levi Proud, and Thomas Carroll. Goal kickers for my Ponga Selix, S. Kennedy, three, B. Kennedy, two. Singles to J. Spinks, J. Hutchinson, C. Sampson, and H. R. Matt Watkins. Best players for Langon Creek, Jake Dominish, Ben Arben, Mitchell Cleggett, Darcy Clifford, Kobe Hellyer, and Troy Blackwell. And the goal kickers, Jay Dominish, four singles to Jay Hall, M. Cleggett, T. Follett, and Jay Toke. So my Ponga Selex go into the prelim. And that's the end for Langhorn Creek, who put up a pretty valiant fight to get into the five. So well done and congratulations. In the men's reserves knockout first semi final, in Canter Bay took on McLaren. And McLaren were too strong. Nine goal five fifty nine defeating in Counter Bay seven goal seven forty nine so pretty close game, uh, really competitive and hard fought. Best players for McLaren: Stephen Branson, Josh Branson, Kale Dello, Matthew Hill, Luke Goodison, and Joel Charla. Goal kickers: J Charla four singles to S Branson, D Zimmer, B Anderson, M Gill, and J Branson. Uh, best players for Encounter Bay, Ambrose Willoughby, Josh Marshall, Tom Pearsons, Mitchell Riley, Lachlan Costello and Shay Vermeulen. Goal kickers, O Price 2, O Johnson 2, singles to J Morris, B Bailey and C Vermeulen. So McLaren go on to the prelim and Encounter Bay ends their season. So in the Telstra Senior Colts, First knockout semi final at Langon Creek Oval on Sunday, the 4th of September. Saw Encounter Bay take on Wollonga, and Wollonga ended up winning that game 10 goal 565, defeating Encounter Bay 7 goal 850. Best players for Wollonga Cody Lang, Jackson Hams, uh, Jesse Nye, Harry Saunders, Jacob Drury, and Jade Edwards. Goal kickers H Saunders 4. Z Edwards 2, singles to J Nye, J Drury, H Arthur and J Hams. Uh, best players for Encounter Bay, Connor Hills, Jaden Christophers, Riley Williams, Logan Golding, Ryan Corby and Ryan J Burrows. Goal kickers R Corby 3, J Parker 2, singles to H Lang and C Hills. So we're longer into the preliminary final and Encounter Bay are out for the season. Here are the results for Flurio Milk Junior Colts, first knockout semi-final at Langon Creek Oval. Uh, Wollonga took on Victor Harbour in a really tight tussle. Wollonga were victorious, 5 goal 8 38, defeating Victor Harbour by three points, 5 goal 5 35. Uh, best players for Wollonga, Patrick McDonald, Noah Mulcurran, Gus White, Jackson Collins, Fletcher Baxter, and Hayden Jonas. Uh, goal kickers, G. White, N. Miller, M. Joy, 
E. Last and R. Mitchell, all one each. Uh, best players for Victor Harbour, Judd Cleggett, Kobe Turner, Rory Power, Xavier Matthews, Oscar Mulhern, and Elliot Fern, Han, Fernman. Uh, goal kickers, Z. Matthews, two. Singles to E. White, L. D. Stringer, and K. Turner. So we'll only go on to the prelim, and that's the end for Victor Harbour. So we'd like to welcome to Fluro Footy Podcast the current A-grade coach, club coach at the resurgent My Ponga Selects Football Club, Rod Mitchell. Uh, My Ponga Selects still have all grades in the finals um, and have a big weekend coming up with the A-grade reserves and senior Colts all playing in the cutthroat final prelim and the junior Colts are already through to the GF and they would have celebrated pretty hard with their junior results in regards to male medals and goal kickers last week. Welcome to the program, mate, and, you know, congratulations on a fantastic season for the footy club. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, pleasure. Like, you know, yeah, like, work's not done, but, yeah, what's happened so far has been pretty exciting, and, uh, yeah, the place is up and about. It's, you know, just reward for what's uh, what's been going on uh, since I've been at the club, and obviously uh, beyond that, so. So it leads me into the first question. You know, obviously your season with the A grade has been pretty outstanding um, and the whole club's performance has been great. Uh, what do you put it down to? What's the turnaround? Oh, it's not only just, it's not just one thing. You know, it's uh, to, uh, to, to turn it around from where we were to where we are now and, um, and, and it's what we are putting in place is for sustained success. It's not about being a one year wonder. Um, so it's, it's off the back of the juniors. Remember you know, the year before I got to the club and it was not nothing to do with me, it's a wonderful work of the junior committee. We shared our cults with uh, uh, Ian Carrillo. So, um, and now to have, you know, three years later to have uh, both teams finish on top of the, as minor premiers and then you know, one in the grand final and the senior cults playing off the prelim final. So there's a really hard working committee on the junior committee. The club is actually set up a little bit different to previous country clubs I've been involved with where they have a junior and a senior committee. Now, I've seen that in scenarios where you might have, for example, my old club at Flagstaff Hill have 20 plus teams. Uh, we have four football teams plus the Moddies, the Minis, etc. obviously they for the junior committee. But for, for the Saturday teams competing for points. Um, so there's a lot of work and a lot of focus went on um, bringing players to the club at junior level and then maintaining them the next season, which then um, allows us to bring their mates into the system, which we, so we could grow from having 14 regulars to, you know, I think this year we might have had 30 plus senior cults, for example. So that's yeah. the junior side of the club. And um, the way the way the system set up for community football, have gone are the days uh, when we would have played and, you know, with clubs would go out and buy players and try and bring them in to bolster up the senior system. You know, there's, there's the point system, the app system, yep. there's the, the, the weekly budget, you know, what you can put on the bar in regard to dollars. So you must have cults feeding into your senior group. And um, that's, you know, that's the recipe. Um, we'll, we'll benefit from that going forward. Um, this year, we only had one senior cult come into the senior grades. Okay. But what, but what we had set up the two, previous two years, one being COVID and uh, last year being a 16 round season, we actually brought really good guys to the club that had networks, whether they were Sacred Heart or Glenelg or wherever they come from. Um, sure. That mates bring mates, and it's really hard to recruit um, players. And I know that you know there's a lot of football out, people out there that um, will be nodding their heads to say it's, you know, it's it's more than one thing that brings players to the club. And um, if you can create an environment where you know it's a learning environment, it's a fun environment, and it's a place they want to be. Yeah. Um, the and they enjoy their footy. Yeah, they do, and um, I'm a I'm an educator. The way I coach, I'm you know my our style is very structured, and we, we you know very disciplined about how we go about it. So the fact that um, we've got guys out there who are, and to be honest, they the guys like to be disciplined. You know, they, whether they like it or say it or not, but you know, they have yep. some discipline in their life through a footy club, and we taught new things. Um, you know, the footy club was, uh, the senior groups were pretty much a see ball, get ball type team and uh, relied on their ability. But 
now we've got some game plans and some structures in place and you know it's taken a little while to to evolve but um but that's that's what's i've, I've put the development down to um, a lot of teaching and a lot of education i use um footage extensively because i don't get much time with the boys uh face to face so right a lot of a lot of the education is done by uh, we film the games i code the games i cut the games i put links via youtube every player gets his own footage every game and we also review footage on thursday nights um, and we have all of our play uh boundary stoppages yeah forward entries we have um clips that we review they review in their own time and they feed provide feedback to me through um social media which is a, a wonderful form sure now the second question you've had success as a coach before in regards to uh, a few premierships with Flagstaff Hill. Uh, tell us a bit about those days. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an old bloke. I've been, uh, <laughs> so I, my, my, all my footy was in Clare. I uh, played 350 plus games at North Clare. And okay, congratulations for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm lucky to have good knees and good ankles, I think. But um, so, yeah, and I, I coached the club there and at all levels, borough grade, and I was a, uh, a president and a secretary. So, you know, when you live in a town, you yeah your footy club so i've uh i've worked for 35 years in it's rsa power as, as an operations manager now but was trade and so when we were privatized i moved the family to uh, adelaide work opportunity yep. so i spent uh, 10 years at happy valley uh, with the, having three sons i was involved with the junior program um and then uh 2010 i went over to, i had a mate who took on the a grade and went over there and as an a grade assistant coach the next year i took on the reserves and uh, 2014 i took on the on the uh, A-grade uh, team, and um, we, we 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 improved. It was a pretty very you know it's a it was a ten year plan put in place by the president at the time, Brett Charlesworth. Okay. Uh, of, of Charlesworth Nuts fame. Yep. And, um, yep. So then in twenty sixteen we won the first flag uh, in thirty one years that the club had won, and that was um, built off the back of juniors and just topping up with three or four. That year we had uh, eighteen juniors in the in the A-grade premiership team that come out of Flagstaff Hill. So. Wow. Uh, and we proceeded then to win the, the next three uh, um, when I was leading the club. Um, and basically, I just ran out of batteries. And uh, so I said to the wife, um, long suffering football wife, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, we, we went overseas actually. We went overseas for a couple of okay. in the States. And um, I, did, I did spend six weeks down with Gianni in, the, in that system, and, okay. um, which I really enjoyed at McLaren. Um, and uh yeah then uh, i come back and an old mate from happy valley darren spinks who's the footy director at uh, um mike ponga uh, rang me and asked me to take on the job and i was very hesitant to be honest i was enjoying uh, being out of footy but look he he showed me what was at the club and um, you know yeah. i did have some interviews at other clubs and i took it on for the challenge to be honest Ed. just the okay fact, where, the, where the club was and i thought i could contribute so mm. well done yeah, so and, and the flaggy boys have uh, they've only just been bounced out of the finals this year, so they won six in a row, and so yeah, this is this, after six years they they won't be there on grand final day, unfortunately. But the B grade boys are still there. Okay, now um, who do you see as your main danger or dangers? Obviously, there's only three guys left, three teams standing, and um, so what team and player do you think is the main dangers? Uh, look, I you ha you have to say McLaren. Um, and player, I I don't put it down to a player. I put it down to their system and the and the depth of their list. You know, to beat McLaren, you, we need, and so we'll we'll, we'll under whoever plays them in the grand final. Uh, we'll need the twenty one to um, have twenty one contributors because they don't rely on one, and that's um, that's the beauty of the list that um, uh, Gianni's built there. You know, um, and, you know he's very. Um, the uh, school teacher in him is very structured as well, and he's he's got a good system in place, but he's got some real real depth at the footy club. So yeah, I, look, I I, 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 I went to the footy um, on Saturday and watched them against Wollonga, and you know they were outstanding. I'm just really impressed with their defence. Yeah, uh, and um, they're a real. Um, he's changed his game a bit. I I shouldn't have given out secrets, but um, <laughs> they uh, few they tweaks. Play. <laughs> yeah, they have. You know, with the depth he's got now, he, he plays a real surge game of footy where they try and get the ball forward at, at all costs. It's a bit of a Richmond flavour to it, where previously they used to hold hold the ball and possess the ball. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So I and look, like I said, he's got wonderful depth and he's got some uh, systems in place now. He's 
been there long enough and the group he's had for long yeah. enough now do yeah. it. Um, you know, they don't have to think about it. They do it. That's, their, that's how they react. That's their game plan. And, and when it, when you can get a, a system into a club where it's your your first option, um, it's, a, it's a good spot to be. Yeah. Now, uh, I see through our friendship on social media, obviously you've become a grandpa and, and I have. So, you know, just a little bit away from footy, we are human and uh, uh, congratulations to you guys. And obviously I'm pretty Likewise. excited about it yeah. as well, mate. Yeah, when did yours come? Yesterday. Uh, yesterday morning, yeah. So uh, a little boy, Charlie, um, was born yesterday morning and everything's healthy. I went and visited this afternoon and I touched base with you last week about coming on the program. You told me about yours as well. So yeah, yeah, a yeah, couple yeah. of proud old boys, mate. Yeah, I, there's not too much to, good about getting old, but being grandparents, so <laughs> Thing, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, look, you, you're pretty busy with your footy and obviously with your work, but what do you indulge in outside of football? What do you enjoy? Do you have a hobby? Yeah, I, I, I family, obviously families, um, you know, you don't get much spare time with in the footy season, but family time is, yeah, I treasure that. Um, we do like, like to travel. Um, wife and I have been you know, to Europe and to the States and uh, yep. around most part of Australia. Um I'm very fortunate where I work. I do I do travel a bit more for work. I am, um, you know, look after an office up in Darwin as well as in the uh, I look after the mining clients for okay for yeah for their electricity requirements. Um, yeah. So I do travel. Um, I actually am, I'm wearing another hat at the moment. I'm uh, commercialising a drone business for Within Enervan, which is a commercial arm of SA Power. So um, so I'm, I'm I'm a bit of a tech and uh, okay yeah innovation. Sort of type dude, I, I don't fly a drone. I've, I've got a son who, do, who does, and there's 40 pilots that I look after. And wow, that, that do, yeah. So that that's a business that grew um, from five years ago. We put a drone up to do some inspections on some power lines, and we now got 40 odd pilots and 40 odd drones. So. Well, maybe you and I should get together, mate, and create one to film the footy overhead. Well, it's interesting. I uh, my son put one up on Saturday. I'm not sure if you would have seen it down there. Oh, I haven't. No, was that feeded into my Ponga's Facebook page or? No, it's just sitting in the coach's drawer at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> just to see how the uh, how uh, Willunga and McLaren were setting up for Global. Yeah. So, yeah, no, okay. That's, that's a bit of a passion. I, I I like tech and I like that innovation stuff. And yeah, and I'm a, I'm a veggie gardener as well. So when the season's over, I'll get to jump in the spring garden. And so you've got and, lots of lettuces on the go. <laughs> yeah, I wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, um, do you support AFL? Uh, do you have a favourite team in the AFL? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an, a Port man. Um, okay. Um, had to be. I'm from a family of eight, and um, you know, my dad was on the railways, and my, we grew up uh, being Port people. And yep, we, we were Port and Collingwood until Port come in, and then uh, we uh, yeah, we so my three sons, my wife, I grew uh, married into a uh, a port family. My wife's off the land at Clare, and thank yep. you, her parents, which knew which team to barrack for. And so we we have tickets. I don't go to as many games as I'd like to. I because um, of my footy commitments. I'm uh, so I probably I've been to two or three um, when I'm coaching. Um, you know, I might go to a Sunday or a Friday game. Um, yeah. So port and uh, players wise, I I don't tend to watch the individual. I tend to watch our you know groups of players go around their business. You know, I, for example, I love. Um, Fremantle's midfield, just the way they work and how, you know, their systems. I love, um, I love how Sydney, their group works, you know, with their defensive pressure. Um, I love the way that uh, Geelong's forward line operates, for example, you know. So I'm a bit of a, yeah, I'm a bit of a nerd there too, I suppose, when it comes to analysing footy. Yeah, we d I had Darcy Springall on. I don't know whether you know Darcy at all, but um, he was talking about when he watches footy because he's a coach, he doesn't watch the football. He actually watches the setups behind the ball, yeah. and uh, tries to emulate some of that sort of stuff with his coaching. Yeah, we've got uh, by accident we didn't set it up like that. We've got our seats are behind the goals on the southern southern end. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll I get in trouble with the family because I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> take a photo with my phone <laughs> so I can look at it later. But, uh, once yeah. a coach, always a coach, Rod. Yeah, I'm not, not sure what I'm <laughs> going to think about when I stop coaching. <laughs> so, look, everybody's got an all-time favourite player in the AFL. Uh, who would be yours and why? Um, I, oh, that's, that's a tough one for me because I, 
you know, obviously being a Port man, I'll, I'll, I'll probably lean towards a Port player, but um, I, I'd suggest it's probably Gavin Waggerty for me. You know, just, okay, um, just you know what he did at Essendon, and um, you know, and he's uh, you know obviously with Brown Motley Medal being an Indigenous player and how he's represented. You know, he's, he's the Indigenous people and, 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 and just the work he's done thereafter. I I think, yeah. And he was just, if it wasn't for Gavin Rainer, we wouldn't have won the, the 04 Premiership, so we'd still be yeah uh, for, our, for our first, I think. But And yeah, also he know. went, obviously, to Essendon first to, yeah. you know, and won his Brownlow there. So he did that on his own, probably without his family around him. And then, you know, came back to, to Port Power and was fantastic for the footy club. Yeah, and, and you know it's really tough on the, those lads that uh, you know the indigenous lads that go away without family support because that's that's their culture, you know. That's yeah. what, uh, that's what they're, they're brought up with, and uh, yeah, like to, to move interstate and to do what he did and be as successful as he was, and then to come home. Uh, yeah, that's he's probably my number one. Yeah, and a good state player as well, mate. Yeah, he, he wasn't bad. In the, in the Look, that's the questions um, on behalf of myself personally and Fluro Footy Podcast. Really appreciate you giving us your time. Um, good luck with the week. I, I know your reserves have probably got a couple of injuries, but your A grade are all right. Yeah, uh, reserves have. Um, yeah, we have, we'll, we'll find out tonight. We did have a recovery session last night. I went down to the football club. We had all the A grade boys there in nice baths and getting ready yep. for, the, for the weekend. There was only a couple of reserves lads turned up, remembering they played on Saturday and they. Yeah. They were in the in the ocean yesterday. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a few lads there that I'm pretty confident that uh, won't come up. Um, yep. We uh, we we're looking at may potentially get another two back in in the A grade this week. Uh, okay. Yeah. Look, um, we share it. But Cade Spinks was, uh, did an ankle about five weeks ago, and he's uh, yeah he's, he's training with us. Um, okay. Good yeah, news. And um, young Jaden Scott, who was a you know, 19 year old forward, yeah. Who's, yeah. Um, Took a few hangers against in Counter Bay. Yeah, he did. And he, you know, the last game because he, he had to go. He went up into state for work, and um, the last game we played at Strath, he kicked five in, a, yep. in that drawn game out of fifteen. So, you know, I'm, I'm not giving too much away. I know um, Mitch will be doing his homework. So, yeah, I, we'll see what happens there with those two guys. And um, obviously, uh, we had Hass out from forward from Darwin come back for a yeah on the weekend, and he made a difference to us. And yeah, it's pretty yeah. important. Yeah, and know. and look out if you kick straight. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, Mitch Mitch Portlock told me after the last time they beat us that uh, in the last two games we played and we kicked eight goal thirty three. So if we can spin that around, yeah, um, that or, or go fifty fifty, mate. You're in it up to your eyeballs. Yeah, yeah I'll take fifty fifty at this stage. So, so. <laughs> look, uh, thanks for coming on. All the best for you and the club in the upcoming weeks. Here are the results from 10 years ago, the 2012 GSFL first and second semi-final results for A grade, the reserves, the senior and junior Colts. So in the men's A grade first knockout semi-final 10 years ago, Yankalilla took on in, in Counter Bay and Yankalilla were too strong, 15 goal, 12, 102. Defeating in Counter Bay, 10 goals, 666. Best players for Yankalilla, K. Lode, T. Fiddock, J. Sidebottom, B. Hughes, L. Durden, A. Bond, and M. James. Goal kickers, P. Fiddock, 3, A. Brandelier, 3, L. Brannigan, Fisher, 2, K. Lode, 2. Singles to M. James, M. Warmington, J. Marshall, T. Plant, and R. Lewis, Sr. Uh, in Counter Bay best players, D Sanders, C Linturn, W Hooper, R Barnes, H Lindsay and C Litley. Goal kickers for In Counter Bay, S Welsh 3, T Hooper 2, C Litley 2, singles to E Horrocks, T Neal and C Butler. So Yankalilla would go off to play in the prelim and that was the end for In Counter Bay. So in the men's reserve grade, First knockout semi-final 10 years ago, Langon Creek took on Goulburn Port Elliot. And Langon Creek were too strong, 16 goal 5-101, defeating Goulburn Port Elliot 5 goal 12-42.
best players for Langon Creek, B. King, A. Cleggett, S. Tonkin, T. Ruthie, D. Raymond and J. Wesley. Goal kickers, B. McLeod, 4, B. King, 3, C. Ruthie, 2, B. Nurse, 2, Singles to S. Grosvenor, S. Williams, B. McHughes, A. Cleggett and T. Ruthie. Uh, best players for Gould Port Elliot, B. Ray, L. Hurst, R. Sheridan and N. Whiterod. Goal kickers, Victor Robertson, 2, D. Moffat, 2 and single to M. Doyle. So in the senior Colts' first knockout semi-final 10 years ago, uh, Mount Compass took on Wollonga and Wollonga were victorious, 13 goals, 785, defeating Mount Compass, 6 goals, 440. Best players for Lunga, J. Docking, D. Ross, M. Ficken, L. Christensen, B. Murray and A. Rennie. Goal kickers, J. Docking, 6, C. Nelson, 3, J. Johnson, 2, singles to D. McNichol and L. Johnson. Uh, best players for Mount Compass, D. Kunis, D. Nash, M. Reed, J. Scuds and H. Peters. Goal kickers for Mount Compass, D. Kamek, 4. Singles to Jay Nash and B Ferguson. So Wollonga through to the prelim and that was the end for Mount Compass. So in the Junior Colts first knockout semi-final 10 years ago, my Ponga Selix took on Strathalban and my Ponga Selix had the win there, nine goal, three, 57, defeating Strathalban, six goal, six, 42 in a pretty close tussle. Best players for my Ponga Selix, Z Gregson, B Hill, J Stangroom, H Lees, J Donahue, and C Bradshaw. Uh, goal kickers for my Ponga Selix, B Hill 5, singles to J Donahue, L Securi, B Ludlow, and H Lees. Uh, Strathalbyn best players, J Wright, N Fitzgerald, R Perry, L Weckett, K Tyler, and B Walkham. Goal kickers for Strathalbyn, D Jockick 2, singles to C Holt, Z Meyer, J Wright and A Pitchell. So my Ponga Selix into the prelim and that was the end of the season for Strathalbyn. Here are the second semi-final results in the men's A grade for 2012. Uh, well, Lunga took on Langon Creek and Langon, Langon Creek were too strong. Uh, defeating Wollonga 15 goal 999 to Wollonga 6 goal 1248. Best players for Langhorn Creek, some familiar names Jay Kellock, uh, Butler, N. Warren, L. McGregor, T. Johnson, and M. James. Goal kickers are uh, Butler 4, Jay Kellock 3, J. Ashton Place 2, P. Sherwood 2, singles to T. Johnson, T. Durham, L. McGregor, and M. James. Best players for Wollonga, B. Haskett, M. Burdett, S. Alexopoulos, T. Steele and B. Meagle. So still a couple of those, those guys playing today. Uh, goal kickers, B. Haskett, three. Singles to M. Portlock, J. Garrett and B. Meagle. So I reckon Langon Creek went on to the grand final and Wollonga were to play off in the prelim. So in the men's reserve grade in the second semi-final 2012, Wollonga took on McLaren and Wollonga were too strong, 16 goal 5 101, defeating McLaren 5 goals 12 42. Best players for Wollonga are Sherry, J. Cross, C. Ballas, C. Hoppo, P. Roberts, and D. Anderson. Goal kickers for Wollonga, D. Anderson 6, R. Sherry 3, D. Laheef 2, M. Hoppo 2. Singles to P. Roberts, C. Ballas, and T. Best. Best players for McLaren, G. Mason, H. Lambert, C. Hill, S. McCade, J. Van Deveen, and J. Durantz. Goal kickers for McLaren, J. Williams, 2, P. James, H. Lambert, and C. Hill, 1 each. So we're longer into the grand final and McLaren to play in the prelim. Here are the results of the Senior Colts second semi final 2012, 10 years ago. Langon Creek took on Gould Port Elliott. Gould Port Elliott had a good win, 14 goals, 6 90. Defeating Langon Creek, 8 goals, 6 54. 
Best players for Gould Port Elliot, Jay Shaw, Zed Watson, H. Davidson, J. Davidson, C. Pierce, and C. George. Goal kickers, C. Pierce, 5, C. Laray, 2, H. Davidson, 2, singles to R. Kleinig, M. Weiss, J. Shepherd, Z. Johnson, and James Fry. Uh, good luck, Josh Shepherd, who is playing in the Amateur League Grand Final, I believe, for Broadview. Uh, so, yeah, good luck, mate. Uh, Leon Creek, best players are Matner, D. Cleggett, K. Chandler, J. Hopgood, J. Schmook, and G. Brand. Uh, goal kickers, K. Chandler, 2, K. Rogers, 2, R. Willis, N. Beer, R. Matner, and J. Hopgood, 1 each. So, Gould Port Elliot into a grand final, and Langon Creek to play off in the prelim. So in the Junior Colts second semi-final 10 years ago, Encounter Bay took on Victor Harbour and Victor Harbour were too strong there. Seven goals, six forty-eight, defeating Encounter Bay, two goal, two fourteen. Uh, best players for Victor Harbour, C. Bartlett, A. Williams, T. Levy, B. Barillo, C. Davenport and J. McKinnon. Goal kickers, A. Williams, two, D. Stock, two, L. Brillo, N. Dowling, and B. Whitworn, one each. And best players for Encounter Bay, D. Burns, J. Weller, S. Bartlett, C. Sampson, J. King, and L. Byrne. And goal kickers, one each to N. Marshall and J. Davis. Here are the 2022 GSFL Flurio Milk Junior Colts male medal and goal kicking winners. So after 48 hours of confusion and mayhem, um, the Great Southern Football League Telstra Senior Colt male medalists, congratulations to Aidan Duke from Yankalilla Football Club and Jaden Schlothy from my Ponga Selix Football Club, who both polled 27 votes. So well done, guys. The 2022 Great Southern Football League GSFL Telstra Senior Colt leading goal kicker. Congratulations, Dexter Kenny, with 50 goals from my Ponga Selix. Here are the 2022 GSFL Flurio Milk Junior Colts male medal and goal kicking winners. The GSFL Flurio Milk Junior Colt male medalist for 2022. Congratulations, Jack Brown, 30 votes from my Ponga Selix. The 2022 GSFL Flurio Milk Junior Colts leading goal kicker. Congratulations to Cody Hines, 59 goals from my Ponga Selix. Here are the 2022 upcoming GSFL preliminary finals held at Strathalbyn Oval on Saturday the 10th of September. So here are the team matchups for the preliminary finals to be held at Strathalbyn Oval on Saturday the 10th of September. So in the A grade, Wollonga will be taking on my Ponga Selix. Should be a cracking game. In the reserves, my Ponga Selix take on McLaren, and that will be an interesting result. In the Telstra Senior Colts, my Ponga Selix take on Wollonga, and I would expect my Ponga Selix to bounce back there. And in the Flurio Milk Junior Colts, Strathalbyn take on Wollonga, and that's up for grabs. So the winners go through to the grand final, and the losers, it's the end of their season. So good luck to all. 2022 Fluro Footy Podcast Team of the Year. Uh, we have picked the team based upon what I've seen so far this year, uh, the number of times in the best players and goal kicking. Like always, there were some unlucky players, but that's footy when you're picking a great team from a big pool of players. 
I could have picked the whole McLaren side with their performance this year, but to be fair, there have been some outstanding performances from other players in other sides as well. Apologies to some clubs uh, as I have not picked a player from their club. If you have any comments or want to pick your own side, please let us know on our Facebook page. So here is Flurio Footy Podcast 2022 Team of the Year. Starting from the forward pocket, we've got Luke Mitten from McLaren. Full forward is Ben Simmons from Strathalbyn. Forward pocket is Tyson Neal, who is the captain from Encounter Bay. Half forward flank, we've got Riley Clamp from Strathalbyn. Centre forward, Tom Pinion from Mount Compass. Half forward flank, Ben Kennedy from Maiponga Selix. On a wing, we've got Darcy Scott from Wollonga. In the centre, we've got Brett Ellis, the vice captain from McLaren. And on the other wing, we've got Jake Spinks from Waiponga Selix. Half back flank, we've got Troy Blackwell from Langon Creek. Centre half back, Lachlan Williams from Encounter Bay. Half back flank, Job Colwell from Wollonga. Back pocket, Lachlan Scott from Wollonga. The other back pocket, Ashley Goodison from McLaren. And full back is Kiefer Zohar from McLaren. Uh, in the rucks, we've got Cal Tonkin from Encounter Bay. Uh, he can change with Sam Laurie from McLaren or Tom Pinion from Mount Compass. Uh, a follower, we, follower, we've got Jesse McKinnon from Victor Harbour. He can change with Tarek Redigolo from McLaren or Tyson Neal from Encounter Bay. And then Rover, we've got Cam Hutchins from Wollonga. He can change with Matt Dominish from Langon Creek or Levi Proud from Maiponga Selix. Um, and if Brett Ellis needs a chop out, Ben Kennedy can swap with him. Um, and on the interchange bench, we've also got Ziggy Vitkunis from Mount Compass. The coach is Gianni Petrucci from McLaren and the assistant is Rod Mitchell from Maiponga Selix. Don't stop. Watch out now.